Julie and I sat and figured out, well, which students would be appropriate to um, be part of the research group of this inquiry. And although we bring back all of the learning to our whole class within our inquiry meetings, we wanted a core group to really help drive that inquiry. And so looking at our assessment data, we realized we had a group of students that were reading well beyond kindergarten, and we thought it would be a great opportunity for them to extend that comprehension and, and develop their critical thinking. And um, in doing so, we wanted to really challenge them. And so after thinking about the five or six students that we wanted to work with, um, I started to look at the expectations and I realized that there were a lot of expectations I could cover with oral language and just that thinking and problem solving. But I also wanted them to improve on their writing. They were writing, but they could have added a lot more detail to their thoughts that they were writing and expressing, but also to their drawings. And the link with Monet really gave them that extra um, intrigue into, um, I guess, an entry for all of us into the inquiry and having an opportunity to learn about an artist who also painted the sky and admired the sky. Um, and it started off with those specific expectations, but in the end, so much more happened and we, a lot more of the expectations were uncovered um, as the inquiry emerged. At that point, we felt ready that we could start filling out that template and think about where the inquiry could go. Um, so the template that we felt comfortable using has an area for us to think about the title of our inquiry, our guiding questions, how it links to the curriculum, what will our assessment be. It has an area for experiences or proposed provocations. And then um, we also have a space to think about, well, what do we feel will be the reaction of the students? So what do we predict might happen? And um, the end of our, our inquiry planning gives us some room to um, build upon it. So there's an area for next steps and as things emerge and we reflect upon our documentation, we're able to um, plan and be responsive to um, what's happening day to day within the classroom. For the sky inquiry, there were two guiding questions. What color is the sky today and why does it change? And that came out of us um, really looking at the changes through the photographs that the students were taking daily. And I never mentioned this, but we gave each child a camera so that they felt really a part of that process. And it wasn't so much about the educators taking the photographs, but it was their photographs of the sky. Um, those two questions were open enough and I guess for us even easy enough to go back to and often refer to whether it was through art that they were painting the sky or whether they were looking outside the window. It was always wondering what color is the sky and why does it change? And it wasn't so much about the right answer as it was about that thinking. So we had our spark and we created our guided questions or our guiding questions. And um, at that point, we knew that we were focusing on our critical thinking and our writing. And as a group, um, we created learning goals about um, really improving, first and foremost, just our conversation skills as a group in order to express and articulate our thoughts comfortably. Then we were able to go to that next step, which is really think deeply about the questions from the Sky Inquiry. Um, we also talked about the difference between a piece of writing with an image that they had drawn and let's say one sentence versus a detailed piece of writing that had their drawing, it had a few ideas that they were thinking about, but more than that, it was their thinking about the guiding questions. So it was getting deeper into their theories, getting deeper into their wonders, and we had our two questions, but what more were they wondering about? The inquiry began um, again with, with two foci. One, to improve critical thinking and engage in those oral conversations, and the other was to improve the detail in their writing. So there were lots of intentional uh, mini lessons where I was um, guiding them through that writing, or it was a shared writing experience to help um, model for them, if, if it were the model's writing, um, what I was looking for, or what I, I meant by a detailed piece of, of writing. Um, there were also other lessons along the way that um, 
we realized are so important for inquiry, and that is how, how to ask questions and how to look at research and find information from nonfiction texts, and then how to take that information and somehow record it and then share it with their peer group. Um, when we realized that Monet was going to be part of our learning and that painting and being an artist like Monet was something that was very important to the children, we um, found ourselves having to YouTube how to paint like Monet. And we had many lessons on um, social media and using YouTube as a way to learn. And um, we learned just as much about how to use the Tash technique of Monet as they did. So sometimes it's also about us being learners and of course us being intentional as teachers, but being able to step back and say that we're facilitating this and we're just as much engaged as partners in the learning.